Rats. Hey, this is Lauren Mary Kim, and I'm the stunt double for Ahsoka Tano in Clone Wars and the armor in The Mandalorian. You're listening to Dennis and Jay on Podcast Stardust. This is the way. Welcome to Podcast Stardust. This is the fully armed and operational podcast dedicated to Star Wars news, reviews, and discussion. I'm Dennis Keithley. And I'm Jay Krebs. Happy Friday. So we're going to start off this weekend with a look at some recent Star Wars news. But before we do that, Jay, remind everybody what our social media contacts are. Absolutely, Dennis. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and X at Podcast Stardust. All right. The is aligned. The signal is boosted to maximum output. The shield is down, and we are now broadcasting to the galaxy. So as has been the case for the last few weeks, there's not a whole lot to share, but uh, we are going to go ahead and get into what there is. Uh, first, uh, we are getting ready for the 10th anniversary of the reunion of Star Wars and Marvel Comics. So it was January 2015 when Marvel reacquired the license, which, you know, let's just talk about corporate synergy here for a second. Uh, that's what happened there and took over publishing the main Star Wars titles from Dark Horse. And uh, they started off, as I think we kind of mentioned recently, uh, with the uh, two ongoing series, which was a Star Wars title uh, written by Jason Aaron and a Darth Vader title written by uh, Kieran Gillen. And they are going to commemorate this anniversary with a Star Wars one shot called A New Legacy arriving on January 29th. And it will contain stories by Charles Soule, Jason Aaron and Kieran Gillen. And they're going to be bringing together all kinds of characters and focusing, it looks like, on the ones that kind of originated or featured in these comics. So, for instance, Jay, we've got Charles Stoll's story. It's going to have art by Ramon Rosanis. And the description is Darth Vader, Grand Moff Tarkett, and some other high-ranking Imperials are gathering on Alderaan to honor Emperor Palpatine. Interesting choice. Yeah. And Dr. Afra and Sana Staros just happen to be there attempting to pull off a heist. Meanwhile, Valance, a bounty hunter who actually originated in the first run of Marvel Comics, but uh, has been the key character in the Bounty Hunter series that wrapped up earlier this year, it happens to be on their trail. And there is a Sith artifact in the mix, which is likely the Mask of Momin, which we've mm. talked about on this show. Okay. And we can also expect appearances by Chanath Shah, Rick Duel, Commander Zara, the Togs, and other characters that have been featured in Star Wars comics recently. So that is the Charles Soule story. Before we get into the other two, what do you think about the sounds of that one? Oh, it's very interesting. Like you said, the the placement of the the setting on Alderaan to honor Emperor mm -hmm. Palpatine. So, you know, a lot of these, as you said, there's definitely some tie-ins to a lot of the other material that that we've definitely talked about here on the mm -hmm. show. And I'm not as familiar with uh, some of the earlier comics that this is tied into but i'm definitely familiar with a lot of the characters so it'll be really interesting i know you have a lot of history with it though so what do you think well this really you know the beginning of this description is like a, a who's who of that first year of star wars comics because mm -hmm. you know darth vader featuring in his own and then uh afra he was interested introduced i believe in issue three of that first run on darth vader and she was kind of his lackey there for a number of years. And then Sana Staros came into the picture. Uh, you know, Balance has been in, big involved. The uh, right. Mask of Momin was actually introduced in the Lando miniseries that came out in 2015. Oh, uh, okay. And I didn't realize so he, that. Yeah. Before we got to see that in the Darth Vader comic that Charles Soule wrote, he introduced mm -hmm. it. He also wrote the Lando series. So, uh, you know, that's had, uh, you know, that's, this is like the best of, Charles Soule. Cha Cha is a bounty hunter that was in that Lando series. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is, this is quite interesting. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for that one. Cause I'm just a big Charles Soule fan for one. And then the Darth Vader, his work on Darth Vader was fantastic. And of course, can't go wrong with Dr. Afro. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So the second story is uh, from Jason Aaron with art by Leonard Kirk. And it is a new story about Scar Squadron which 
uh, as co coincidentally known as uh, Task Force 99, not to be confused yeah. with Clone Force 99, uh, different guys. Um, I can't remember. Have we ever talked about Scar Squadron here on the show? I think in passing, but it's not something that we've really dove into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they showed up first in Jason Aaron's work in the Star Wars comic. And it is an elite squad of stormtroopers that were basically tasked with doing all kinds of things for the Empire. But then they had a number of run-ins with the big three and Chewbacca, R2 and 3PO and the like. And I'm trying to remember where I saw them last in the comps because I've fallen behind in comics recently and I need to get caught up other than things like the High Republic. And they may have been abandoned on a planet somewhere. So it'd be curious to see if they got it. I hadn't even occurred to me that they just kind of went missing in this. So hmm. uh, getting a new story about them should be fascinating. Yeah, for sure. Do you think it's kind of like, I don't know if weird is the word, but the 99 is both used here and, you know, for Clone Force 99. Do you think that there's any tie in whatsoever? No, no. I mean, these are legit stormtroopers. The leader of that squadron is a sergeant and you get his backstory in one of the issues where okay. he was on a planet where uh there was you know it was war and all kinds of things were going on and the empire showed up and kind of set things straight and so he was attracted to that and grateful for what they did to his planet so he joined them he was also proficient in using a lightsaber mm. so in one issue the uh the sergeant was actually giving luke some uh, saber training for an arena on Nal Hutta, where uh, Luke was at the moment. Um, uh, Gracchus the Hutt's arena, as a matter of fact, I think we've talked about him before too. Mm -hmm. yep. So yeah, there, there's no real relationship other than the fact that they have Force 99 in their names. Gotcha. But it is an interesting coincidence. It yeah. jumped out to me for the first time because I'd actually never thought of them as Task Force 99. I'd always thought of them as Scar, Scar Squadron. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then uh, you know, that came up. So I guess uh, Dave Filoni kind of commandeered it. So, yeah, indeed. Mm -hmm. And then the third story is from Kieran Gillen and Salva Espin doing art. And this is a new Darth Vader and Dr. Afra story, also featuring what has been described as a perilous game between Triple Zero, BT1, and Kersantan. So, yay, more Afra. Wow. Um, there were some really great stories between Afra and Vader back in the Vader comic days. And then, of course, he's showing up a time or two in Afra's ongoing title before it ended and then in various crossovers they've nearly run into each other as well mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um yeah i'll be interested to see what they get up to in this one. Oh yeah for sure and i i love this whole combination of these characters specifically because mm -hmm. it just works so well in the comics and i've always enjoyed all the stories that contain each one of these characters so that'll be that'll be a good one yeah i already liked kersantan when he was afra's minion in right. the comics, but I just grew to like him even more when he showed up in the book of Boba Fett. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I'll never so. forget that that night that that premiered. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I told the story. I literally threw a pillow across the room. It was like, shut the front door. <laughs> it's Chris Ann. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, it's it's cool that they're doing this because they've uh, moved on to the uh, the maxi series that they're doing or that, you know, that's three different series that they're ultimately end up in the Battle of Jakku. Mm -hmm. uh, which we had talked about. And I know that's underway. I've seen people starting to post reviews. I'm kind of waiting for those to show up on uh, Marvel Unlimited, which I have a subscription to, so I can read them there. And uh, But I'm looking forward to seeing what's going on. But so far, it sounds like they've, uh, there's some pretty good reaction to that. I know the Operation Cinder is showing up there. and uh, But with all that being said, <clears throat> I don't think the likes of Afra, Triple Zero, BT1, Kersantan, and Valance, and these other characters have really been addressed is what's going to happen to them uh, after mm -hmm. return of the Jedi. So uh, right. getting, getting some more content featuring them is always welcome. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Bring it on. Okay. Well, then the other story we've got is another celebrity ghost has been announced for Star Wars celebration, in Japan, 2025. And that would be Galen Urso himself, other also known as Mads Mikkelsen. Uh, he, you know, he starred in rogue one and yeah, so he'll be making the trip to Japan and joining the previously announced guests that include Alan Tudyk, Manny Jacinto, Daniel Logan, Anthony Daniels, Tamara Morrison, Doug Chain, and Ashley Eckstein. Cool. So <clears throat> have you met Mads before? No, I have not. And I don't know if he was at 
Was he at the cel- at celebration when we were there the last time for 2022? I'm not sure that he's been to a stateside celebration. I feel like he's shown up in the London celebrations. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know he did in the 2018 one because he was there to help promote row one. Mm -hmm. And then I think he showed up the last one as well, but don't quote me on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's a really good get for them. Yeah. And they're getting to go all the way to Japan. So that's, uh, I mean, the likes of Tamara Morrison, I mean, he's got to hop over from New Zealand, which is not quite the trip. <laughs> but uh, for a lot of people, this is going to be a, a big commitment weekend. So mm-hmm. I'll be curious to see who else they bring over. I'm guessing we're going to see a lot more of the uh, cast for The Mandalorian and Grogu will be there. Mm-hmm. I, you know, we've kind of talked about this in the past as guests have been announced, but the Skeleton Crew cast will oh, likely yeah. be there. I would not be surprised if we get... The cast from Andor uh, season two showing up because that should be coming out sometime next year as well. I'm thinking there, you know, there might be more announcements about the second season of Ahsoka. So, you know, would be surprised to see Rosario Dawson and the like. But uh, and then if there's any type of animation announcement going. Yeah, which we hope for. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little surprised we haven't heard anything already. I kind of figured that we'd be hearing something because they'd be aiming for a late 20 you know, mid to late 2025 release of a new animated show. And I'm, I'm guessing now probably 2026, I'm not giving hope up hope on a, a new animation series. Yeah. Me neither. Especially with the little like breadcrumbs or cookie crumbs, if you want to call them that, mm-hmm. that we've been left here and there and everywhere. And, mm-hmm. uh, but you know, it's funny with star Wars news. Sometimes they tease things for a very long time before they finally commit to actually releasing the news and then other times they just drop it so you know it's like it seems like yeah it's it's, there's not really a whole lot of in between well you know to pull back the curtain for everybody here you know we're pretty selective on what sources we're willing to run with Mm -hmm. before we talk about something here on the show because i know there's this notion that if it's not been announced like lucas now then you can't count it well okay i i appreciate that take but there's the you know the industry rags like deadspin and uh you know collider hollywood reporter and the likes Mm -hmm. that have good sources uh and if they're reporting something you know there's smoke there's fire on that and you know those are the types of ones that we relied on when we started talking about all the various people that were going to show up in season two of the mandalorian and then Mm -hmm. season three you know, Christopher Lloyd, Timothy Oliphant, and all those, uh, Katie Sackhoff reprising her role as mm-hmm. Bo-Katan and the like. And there's there's just nothing out there right now on the current state of movie development or animated series or new shows for Disney+. Plus. It's really, really quiet out there. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And it's interesting, all those names that you just ran down as well would also be potentials to show up at celebration japan too i could see katie sackoff showing up there yeah why not why not especially if she's going to be in the mandalorian and grogu exactly do you think we'll ever see pedro pascal at one of these that'd be nice it would be nice um but he is just one of the busiest actors out there oh i know he's so right now he's you know between doing voice work for the mandalorian which i don't think takes up that much of his time i don't think he's on set ever much for the Mandalorian because uh, they're using his stands in to fill um, stand ins, I should say to fill in uh, for him on the set. But then, you know, he's in the last of us. He's getting ready to do um, or is currently doing fantastic four, which comes out next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, you know, he's going to be really busy with Marvel. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, it would be, it'd be interesting to see he's in the new gladiator movie coming up right. in November. So yeah, I'm excited for that one. Yeah, I, 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 yes, I think he'll show up at one one day. So he was at, uh, now I think about it, he was actually at Celebration in 2019 in Chicago. He just wasn't doing any signings. That's right. That's right. He was, when, he was on the Mandalorian panel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it was him, uh, Carl Weathers, Gina Carano, Dave Filoni, John Favreau. Mm-hmm. Right. And am I missing anyone? But I feel like that's the people who showed up for that. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, that's the one where Colby Wan and I, you know, and and we all did, but we had to freeze in the sleet of April in Chicago to get over to that panel. Yeah. You know, I got to tell you, I'm not, I'm a little surprised that you normally when about this time or so that I'm starting to like, 
feel like I'm missing out on what's going to be coming up an upcoming on an upcoming celebration. I'm just kind of not feeling that way this time. Yeah, I'm and, with you. And I'm not sure entirely why that is. And I, you know, I think part of it is simply that Japan is so hard to get to for mm -hmm. one that that was logistic going to be a logistic hurdle that I knew I just likely wasn't going to clear because of the amount of the time commitment. And we've talked about this before. I don't want to go to Japan just to spend three or four days in a convention center. If I'm going to go to Japan. I want to spend more time in Japan, but can I, I'm not sure I could have afforded to take the time to do that mm -hmm. at the time of celebration. So that was one thing, but they're just, uh, you know, it's kind of, we've been alluding to over the course of this conversation. We know they're, they've announced these three movies. They've been very, very quiet on them. We know. And then they announced the Mandalorian and Grogu <laughs> leapfrog all three that they announced at the right. last celebration. <laughs> and it's the first movie that's going to get made. And we know from the D 23 event that, you know, they showed a sizzle reel and they're filming that, but there just isn't a whole lot of buzz about projects mm -hmm. or anything right now, which is just, it's just kind of weird. And, you know, on the one hand, we've kind of asked them to not tell us things unless they're serious about it or they know right. it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But on the other, I'm just kind of used to their being a buzz about stuff. And we don't really know what the long-term outlook is for shows on Disney plus or the movies for that matter. Sure. Yeah. And I think, you know, you nailed it when you said about the fact that we've made our peace with not going to Japan, that was just kind of like a, okay, well, we're just not going to be going. So the, the FOMO isn't really there because we made our peace with that. But I think, mm -hmm. you know, as far as the, some of these news and things go, I mean, we're still very early. I mean, it's only October and this isn't until April. So I feel like you and I will probably end up amping up the excitement as it gets a little closer. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah, like, especially come March, I think we'll be really like, Oh, wow, this is gonna be great. You know? Sure. And at that point, we'll start to have a better idea of more guests that are going to be there. And they'll probably have some hints about Things are going to happen on the galaxy, assuming they use all the stage names, you know, the galaxy stage, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. and the like. And so that would, that'll help. Um, but here's a question. I mean, do we think they're going to do a celebration in 2026? Or are they just going to wait till 2027 and do one stateside to celebrate 50 years of a new hope? Honestly, I kind of hope that they wait until 2027 and just, you know, make it special and mm -hmm. get that anticipation up and have enough time to really you know, have everything planned, not that they don't have things planned, but mm -hmm. it, I just, I don't know, as much as I love being able to celebrate Star Wars all the time with these conventions, I think spreading them out a little bit more also makes it more special. Yeah, I hear you. It's just the fact that we'll not have had one locally uh, here in the United States since 2022. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, five years, that's a huge gap. I mean, I know there are people that from the States that are going, that went to London and are going to go to Japan, but I'm of mixed feelings about it. I think um, I've got Star Wars friends all over the country that I'd love to see in person again. And it's just hard to do outside uh, a celebration, you know, the mm -hmm. uh, best is. you can do a long time is to talk to them online or text messages and stuff like that, which is great. It's better than nothing, but it, it, getting a chance to hang out at, you know, and a, a panel discussion or, you know, going to dinner after the day's events or, you know, any of those things is just uh it's a fun thing to do. It's you know, the great thing about celebration is more than just all the Star Wars announcements and stuff. It's just getting to see all these people that we've gotten to know online over mm -hmm. the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite parts of it. That's for sure. All right. Well, we'll have to see, I guess, because uh, they'll probably make that announcement at the end of a uh, celebration in April. So mm -hmm. we'll find out. Yeah. Okay. Well then, yeah, short news week, but that's kind of been par for the course as of late. So thank you all for joining us here on Podcast Artists as we went through what we had. Hope you've enjoyed the discussion. And if you did, then hey, go ahead and do all those podcast things uh, to support the show. Like, rate, subscribe on whatever podcatcher it is that you use. And then over to RetroZap.com where you can find all of our past episodes, all previous 795 of them, and you know, getting ready to hit that 800 mark here in the next week. So, uh, you know, be on the lookout for that. But while you're at RetroZap, you can check out all the other shows that are on the network, including Agents of Shields Case Files, Animaniacast, Bruise and Blasters, Dork Lair, Doomcast, Enjoy Stuff, Love, Death, and Robots Plus, Superhero Suite, and The Warp Trails. And, of course, uh, we appreciate your ratings and reviews, as I just mentioned. 
And uh, Jay, you want to go ahead and remind everybody where they can find us online and some of our other homes where we have things going on. Absolutely. So it's really easy to find us. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and X conveniently at Podcast Stardust. And we also maintain a Pinterest board with lots of, or I should say Pinterest page with lots and lots of boards. And then we also have our two YouTube outlets, which is the traditional YouTube as well as YouTube music. So head over to both of those, like, subscribe, and share those out. And you can definitely find us on all of the other platforms as well. And so Spotify, iTunes, as Dennis was mentioning, even Audible. So anywhere that you can share the show out and let people find us would be great. And then we're also on Discord. So if you're up for some real-time chatter, we are just one of many different rooms over on the Bratches Up Discord server. And then we also have a Tee Public store where you can find one of seven different show logo designs that are available on many kinds of things from t-shirts and sweatshirts to different kinds of home goods. And so the link to that will be in our show notes as well. All right. Uh, Jay, remind everybody what you got going on in cosplay before we get out of here. Oh, sure. Yeah. So I just wrapped up uh, another appearance in New Philadelphia uh, over this last weekend. And so I have uh, a post up about that, uh, supporting arts in Tuscarawas County, Ohio. And so my next big one will be in Columbus in December at Galaxy Con, where I keep saying I get to see Hayden again. So I'm very excited about that. Um, but until then, you can catch me on my Instagram, which is at j.snipscosplay. And you can uh, see all of the things that I'm up to as Ahsoka and Hera, the fourth sister, my Mandalorian, and more. Okay. Oh, coming on the show on Monday, we're getting back into our The Clone Wars rewatch. And then on Wednesday, we will be uh, getting back into our year-long series looking at The Phantom Menace for its 25th anniversary. And we got a couple good guests lined up for that. So, thanks for listening to episode 796 of Podcast Artists, everyone. Have a great weekend. And until next time, may the Force be with you.